so Russell Simmons believes that hip hop artists' expressions are mirrors and sometimes of what we do, but then overlook, and they just bring it out. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? <laughs> Absolutely, it, it mirrors society, but in some ways um, it's exaggerated. Um, today I saw a video, what was the name of it? Tip Drill. Okay, all right. How many, I don't know, how many artists have experienced that? I don't know how many regular people in the hood have experienced that. I don't know who, you know, has experienced that. So as a reflection of mirroring society, I think they might mirror society with a, a great exaggeration. And, you know, in my background is television, okay? So I'm talking about, I'm talking about this in, as, uh, from a, uh, communications perspective from a theoretical perspective when you I worked in news my whole life when you work in news you you can't show what's in the middle because most of us are in the middle there are a handful of us on the outside on one side and another handful of us on the outside on another side those are the people who make the news those are the people who are exciting to us so if you have um, a guy going out on a date and he buys pizza and they go to a movie and they hold hands and kiss on the cheek Nobody cares, but you know if you can swipe a credit card, and you know what I'm talking about, then that's going to sell. That's going to get the attention, and that's not a reflection of reality. Sorry, Russell Simmons. Very cool. Very cool. That's a great answer. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's the reality, though. It's the reality. It does not mirror society. It mirrors what they want you to see and what sells. And the marketing department had decided that that's what they're gonna focus on. So they show that because it sells. Again, the record industry is absolutely about making money. These companies do not start because they want to change the world. Nobody ever heard that word. They didn't want to change the world. They want to make money. So they're gonna go after what sells. For them, that's sex. Drugs. And violence. And bu exactly. Violence certainly And sells. violence. Exactly correct. That's what sells for them. And why? Because it shows up in the numbers. And they fight to keep that happening. I think what they're doing is selling a fantasy. Yeah, it does matter. And um, people are buying a fantasy. That's the bottom line. Because I, I know that most people I know, regardless of class level, do not on a routine basis allow a credit card to be swiped between their butt cheeks. So that's a fantasy, you know, that's looking inside of a world that somebody else has created and that we don't live every day. Um, but I think it's an interesting, um, it, it's an interesting contrast to note that people continuously say that they're sick of seeing something like that, but the voyeur in every person, in most people, is not controlled, and so they can't stop looking at it mm -hmm. or wanting to participate. They kind of want to participate, but they don't want other people to know they're participating. Well, you but know, I'm sorry. I was just going to say is as long as that type of person exists, like I mentioned before about the psychology of the situation, that they're and they're willing to put their money behind it that type of thing is going to continue to happen. I think most of that type of music, like for example, if you watch any of the, the video cable channels these days, I don't care whether it's BET, MTV, whatever it might be, and you look at your typical hip hop video, how many videos do you remember watching in the last week or last month that didn't have some hoochie mamas dancing around the screen, just wearing as little as possible, but it fits in with where the mindset is these days. What's the biggest type of internet traffic in the world today? Pornography, Pornography sites. Porno sites are the largest single unit of internet visits in the world. Not educational stuff, not musical stuff, not anything that might be mind enriching. It's TNA. And that TNA is just now being equated and played out in music. So you have to understand that, like Russell says, the music is just a reflection of society. 
it's not making society, it's just reflecting what's coming out of the minds of society. So, you know, once we realize that, and there are only four major multinational record companies in the world today, only four. There used to be seven, and it was six, and it was five, now it's four, and if EMI goes out of business, it'll be three. But their sole responsibility is to their shareholders to bring value to the stock. And they're gonna do whatever is legally possible to bring value and dividends to that stock. Because if they don't, they're out of office, they're out of the work, they have to live off a golden parachute and the next person comes in only to do the same thing. So if you kind of realize the cycle that we've created and that we live in, then you stop being real, you know, uh, I guess um, <laughs> euphoric about what's going on and get real with it. Well, um, personally, I am a Gemini, and once again, this is one of the issues where I'm torn <laughs> between the two. Um, I would not, I wouldn't agree that that the music is just a mirror and the culture is just a mirror of uh, of what rappers are actually seeing and experiencing. But I also would not believe that their music does not have an impact on the audience. And um, in saying that, I, I have been, I have worked closely with people in the industry. And I have been to video shoots and seen half-naked girls, half-naked women, excuse me. I've seen half-naked women. And I've seen half-naked women follow artists back to their trailers to do God knows what. And so that's why I don't believe that, that rappers are just making this stuff up. It's interesting that you should say that because earlier, I, I can't remember who on that side of the room said it, but they talked about parental guidance. And when you talk about television, George Gerbner's cultivation theory um, um, alludes to an IV drip in your arm when you're born because you're exposed to media messages your entire life. And as a just in my intro to mass communications class, I always have everybody who has a shirt on or a cap on that has some kind of ad or you know just you know name. And I had them stand up, and I the students get to see how many images, how many messages they're exposed to just in the classroom alone. And when you when you compound that with the messages that are reinforced over and over in music, on television, in magazines, on the film screen then you tend to believe that this is a reality. So some of these young women have come up through the age of hip hop where you know these messages have been promulgated again and again and again, and they think that's a reality. How many women in here have done that? Okay, so you know, responsible parents and the kids to college, there are parents who have done this and you know, the parents are not much older than Children, the children themselves, you know, that 14, 15, 16, they're parents, they're raising these children. And they're, you know, sending their girls out, this is what you do, this is, this is it. There's no, no, there's nothing behind that. There's no substance to some of, you know, what they're viewing. You, and, and media messages are so persuasive that scholars say, even if you're informed, if you're educated against the messages, the messages still affect you. So, you know, who, you can't fault these girls for doing what they're doing. They're just doing what they've been taught all these years. So true. Lisa, uh, how much of it do you think is subliminal? Not too much with some, with some um, music videos I've seen and with some songs I've heard. I love, um, Stephen and I talk about this all the time, about how some of the old school uh, musicians talk about sex. Well, you know, everybody's going to talk about sex for, you, forever. It's just like Carol said, it's a train wreck. You're, you're going, you have these prurient interests. You're going to want to know about it. But there's a difference in saying, um, you know, I love you, I want to marry you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, and saying some of the things that I won't even say on a microphone or even without a microphone. But they're, it's so blatant. And, and this goes all the way back to the beginning of this country and education. This country never wanted public education. Only the aristocratic um, members of society were allowed to have an education. They fought like cats and dogs to keep your kids from picking up a book. And I tell my students this all the time. You are bombarded with news about Paris Hilton. Do you know what I did yesterday? I spent the whole day chasing down a rumor for extra to find out if Brad and Angelina got married in a hotel, I mean, in a wedding chapel on Burgundy Street. 
That was my whole day because people want to know, what did Barack Obama do yesterday? What is Hillary Clinton talking about? What's going to happen with your housing, what, your mortgage payments? What's going to happen with gas prices that are approaching $4 a gallon? How, how do we stop any of these things? We don't know because we know 50 Cent has a new video out and it's the bomb and that's what we want to look at. So but that's what, I'm, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, we were created to be influenced by something. And the people who are in marketing houses at these labels know that. So they know if they can influence you enough times with the same message that, like Dr. Lisa said, you're going to be influenced by it. Now, also, as far as media outlets are concerned, they're the ones who have the power to put on what they want to put on. So if they decide that Paris Hilton getting a new dog is front page news, then that's what it's going to be. Now, sometimes I don't believe that um, it, what we see on TV is is all is purely a reflection of society. I think sometimes it's it's a message that the powers that be want to get out. If they decide that they want you to have a certain message, then that's what they're going to put on television, and they're going to play it over and over and over again. Case in point, when this issue with Jeremiah Wright first came out. I looked at Fox News, and for the entire evening of Friday, they looped and looped and looped and looped Dr. Wright, and they kept talking about the same stories. Now, I'm not going to, you know, argue a political position, but to me, it was the example that if the media wants you to get a certain message, and they control the media outlet, they will repeatedly play the same issue over and over, knowing that inherently you were made to be influenced by something. And it's called agenda setting, where the media don't mm -hmm. tell you what to think, they tell you what to think about. Right, exactly. Yeah. There was, I mean, that very same point was a topic of discussion. I don't know about how many people saw the Bill Maher show over the last couple of days, it had Tavis Smiley on it, and they talked about that very same point, for example, very few media outlets would play the entire sermon or put into context Jeremiah Wright's statement. Hardly anybody mentioned the fact that he was an ex-Marine. Hardly anybody talked about the facts that he had schools and the hospice and all kinds of other stuff in the community. All they did was they took that loop and they looped it and they looped it for the sound bite. So we get impression by the sound bites as opposed to the substance. And just like any advertising agency, they measure the effectiveness of a commercial by how many impressions it makes. Exactly. So based on the number of impressions, the mind, like, like Professor Lisa said earlier, the mind is kind of like that sponge that slowly and slowly absorbs all of this nonsense that we're fed, but we're fed not in a, in a very um, shotgun approach so you see the whole thing, but more like a rifle shot where all you're going to see is what they can fit into that 30 or 60 second sound bite. And I think music whether it's hip hop, rock and roll, reggae, or gospel, is really the same. Because all you're going to be fed is what's commercially attractive and what's gonna bring the profits. And the things that don't give you the same quick sell, they may be on the shelf, but they're not going to be spending the same amount of marketing and promotion dollars. You're not gonna get the same exposure. You're not gonna get the same impressions in your mind because you're not gonna hear it in radio over and over again. So. I think it behooves you all, because you've already taken a step in terms of music classes and law school and everything else, to be ahead of the curve and understand the fact that you control how much influence the media has over your life and your brain and your thinking and your family and everything else in your environment. And they keep talking about money and how the bottom line is the bottom line. And it can be that for some people. It doesn't have to be that for you. I don't think you picked a Jesuit university to come to, you know, to be multi-millionaires. I think there's some substance in each one of you just in the fact that you chose to come to Loyola. And I tell my students all the time, every morning when you wake up, you have to wash your face and brush your teeth. And if you don't like the person who's looking back at you in the mirror because you made some decisions that may not be the best for society, for yourself, for your family, then you better make some other decisions because you have to face you every single day. I had a question asked me just a moment ago that I think is, I should repeat, a young man came to me and said, how much credence would you give thinking out of the box? And I told him everything, because that's your dream. Everybody's looking at the box. Everybody wants to be a part of the box. 
But those of you that can think outside the box have a chance at changing things. That's what, that, instead of conforming to it, you have an opportunity to make some differences because you have the ability to think outside the box. And that's how Sugar Hill Gang got started, thinking outside the box. You know, they were the ones who set the world on fire, who set the music exactly. industry on fire because they didn't do what everybody else was doing. But now for the last, what, 20 some years, everybody in hip hop has been doing what everybody else has been doing because this is how they make money. And I deal with it as far as Hollywood because that's, you know, that's my area. But it's the same thing. In Hollywood, you're going to make a movie that works and if that movie works, then you're going to make a sequel, and you're going to make a sequel to that, and a sequel to that, and it doesn't matter how stupid it is, if it's making money, they're going to show another yeah. one. When they made uh, Waiting to Exhale, and they couldn't believe there were intelligent black women who had <laughs> careers, and who had dreams and goals, and who just weren't hookers and you know video dancers, people flocked to the theater because they wanted to see that, then all of a sudden it was like, oh, let's make more movies about black people because obviously oh, I didn't they know have that a story existed. that we not Yeah, <laughs> they don't believe there are people like Carol with a law degree and you know the rest of this table with all these, all these credentials because the images you see of African Americans, especially in this country, are the same pervasive images that you've been seeing. And those same images have been used to justify slavery, justify Jim Crow, justify segregation, justify econ um, economic disparity, justify poor schools, poor neighborhoods, violence in your community, mistreatment by law enforcement, and that's what we are putting on. When we decide to say, okay, we'll be a video girl or we'll shoot somebody, kill somebody in a video, that's the image that we're promulgating, that's who we, we're saying we are, as if this group of rappers speaks for all of black America. There's, well, no, there's a kid, I'm sorry, there's a guy in, in Houston that's been rapping for 20 years, K Reno. I'm guaranteeing you this is the best rapper in the United States. And for 20 years, this guy has not had an opportunity to be put on the, you know, the big screen, so to say. He tours Europe a lot or whatever the case is. But he's one of those guys that he's a conscious rapper. He tells you exactly what is going on in this world. The propaganda, the whole nine yards. No one wants to give this kid a deal. You know? See, that's the essence, though. That's the essence of rap. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to bring about a, a consciousness. Social. Uh, something about substance that the world can take a hold of. That's why it became so important to the culture, because it was it started in Brooklyn, and uh, uh, and then it went to the West Coast, and it was the East Coast rap and the West Coast rap, but and then it went to the Southern raps. They all had their definition. Then we looked up, and it was gangster rap. It went from something that should have provided some intelligence to something that provided stupidness. Um. <clears throat> oh, sorry. And you know why it happened? It's because there's a group of Americans mm -hmm. who are disenfranchised. They're not even called Americans. They're African Americans. You know, like their tax their tax dollars don't pay the same taxes. You know, <laughs> they, it, they're unequal just because of melanin. And they were disenfranchised. They didn't have a voice. If they said this was happening in our community, nobody believed them. And I can tell you how yeah. many times I've gone to to do a story where, or I've watched a story on the news where they um, had uh, an incident of pr police brutality and they've shown the victim in the street with the cap on backwards and you know, nothing against you, cap on backwards, gold teeth, inarticulate and walking around and may have been brutalized but we don't know. And then they go to the police chief who's sitting in his office with you know, bells and whistles on his coat and bars and you know, the American flag behind him with his big mahogany desk. Who do you think is more credible? And that's what happened. And so that's where the disparity comes. So these people were disenfranchised. They didn't have a voice. They got this voice sitting yes. on street corners making music. And you know, Ronald Reagan took music out of the schools. So they didn't have instruments. They couldn't go to chorus, you know. So they sat on the corners. They made, these, they made this music and somebody walked by and said, hey, you know, yes. this is pretty good. We need to get this out. They were outside the box. And they had their own thing. And then in order to make it, profitable or continually profitable, it had to be more of this or more of that, yeah. not what you want it to be. It has to be what we want it to be because we're making the money. Well, let me tell you, and I don't mean any disrespect whatsoever, but Al Copeland just died. And if you drove past the uh, Lake Lawn Cemetery, you saw his boats and his cars and his motorbikes. And they said in the paper he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'm not comparing Al Copeland to rappers or anything. I'm just talking about the amount of money he has. 
but with all the money he has, he can't take his boats and his cars and his motorbikes or his hundreds of millions of dollars with him. So when you make your decisions about who you are, about how you're going to affect this industry, you have to realize that it's your name that's going to leave an effect on this country. It's not your money, unless you're like, um, who is it, the Microsoft head, oh, who's yeah. Bill Gates who's giving away so much. Yeah, Warren Buffett. If you can do that with your money, then fine. But, you know, do it the right way. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. You don't have to continue exploiting people you know, for the wrong way. Think about what, you know, what these videos are doing to women, you know, and think about whether you have a mother or not and whether you'd want her to be exposed to that or whether you'd want her to even see that.